Oh, no, Beckham found a new home. Let's talk about it on Fantasy Football Today in 5. Welcome to FFT in 5. I'm Chris Towers. I'm here with Adam Azer. And our original plan for today's podcast was to talk about some wide receiver rankings and risers and fallers coming out of free agency. But we got a little bit of news dropped on us. Odell Beckham signs a one-year deal with the Baltimore Ravens. The deal will pay him $15 million guaranteed. And we're going to talk about the fallout from that. We'll also get to some wide receivers rankings and Wide receivers, rankings, risers, and fallers. That's a, a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, we'll get to that uh, towards the end of the, the five-minute pod. But, Adam, Odell Beckham to the Ravens. Obviously, that answers one question, which is who's going to catch the ball for the Ravens. Now, we you know add him to Rashad Bateman and Mark Andrews. It's a, a decent little receiving core if, if Odell Beckham has anything left. But, obviously, we don't know who the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens will be since Lamar Jackson is still a free agent. But, do you really think Odell Beckham has much left? Not really, but when the Ravens, you know, it's a franchise that people respect. Though they haven't been great with wide receivers, but when they give him that much money, maybe mm-hmm. he really is back to uh, being his explosive self. Um, I'm starting to think right now, would I take him over Rashad Bateman? Because I'm just not sure Rashad Bateman's ever really going to become anything. I, I think I would not. I think I would take Bateman, but uh, this doesn't affect Mark Andrews for me, by the way. But do I think Beckham has anything left? No, I don't think so. And we don't know who their quarterback is. I know he's not going to be on a prolific passing offense, right? It might be an efficient one, but it's not going to be a prolific one, whether it's Lamar Jackson or whether they they lose Jackson. There's not really anything great out there. So I'm not too excited about him for fantasy. And quite frankly, I'm shocked. I I think I said something like, oh, no, if you think you're getting $15 million, good luck. I said that last week. And Someone gave it to him, so I'm surprised. Uh, but as of now, I'm not. This isn't really moving the needle for me in any direction. Yeah, this is a Ravens offense that has had two thousand yard receivers in the Lamar Jackson era. That was back in 2021 when Mark Andrews and Marquise Brown both did it. Marquise Brown got to a thousand and eight yards in 16 games. It's worth noting their number two wide receiver or, or number three pass catcher in that season had 515 yards in 12 games. That was Rashad Bateman. So. It's unlikely that if Mark Andrews stays healthy, Lamar Jackson is back, that both of Rashad Bateman and Odell Beckham will be good fantasy options. It's pretty unlikely, I think, that either of them will be must start, but I don't think either of I, I don't think there's much chance that both of them will be good. So it does come down to which one you believe in. It's you know, Odell Beckham will be 31 on November 5th. Uh he had 537 yards and five touchdowns in 14 games in 2021 when he was split time between the Browns and the Rams. There were stretches, especially in the postseason, where Beckham really did look a lot better than he did early on in the season. So, you know, who knows? But tor- second torn ACL, second major knee surgery. I'm with you. I think it's unlikely that he makes much of an impact. I think if I could take a chance on him around 100th overall, I might be willing to do that in my drafts or outside of the top 100, but anything more than that, I just don't think is worth chasing. It's a big name, but not much more than that. And let's talk about some players who rose in the rankings or fell in the rankings after free agency. You know, we're comparing them to where they were before. And Adam, why don't you hit us one with one who's risen? I apologize for being so obvious with these, but I've got to say Garrett Wilson is a rider. I I saw him go in the draft that we did a couple weeks ago. Dan Schneier took him in the top 15th, something like that mm-hmm. right around there, which, which definitely seems high. I don't think I'd do that. However, I could certainly see a scenario where he ends up paying off there because, you know, you're not going to get him in round three if you have an early pick in round two. So if you really want Garrett Wilson, I get it. Aaron Rodgers is a guy who absolutely fixates on his favorite receiver in the red zone, in the green zone, in the end zone. He's done it every single year. Last year, he did it for the first half of the year with Alan Lazard, and then he switched mm-hmm. over to Christian Watson when Watson got healthy. So that didn't exactly count, but I, those trends existed there. So, uh, you know, obviously he gets, he's, this is all assuming that eventually happens that Rodgers goes to the jets. Garrett Wilson gets a major quarterback upgrade. There's really nothing preventing him from being one of the next great fantasy wide receivers. I think he's a terrific player, uh, with a good opportunity, not worried about Alan Zard, not worried about Michael Hardman. So he's a, he's a riser and I could see, I mean, for me, he's a third round pick, but second round pick is not out of, out of the question here for, for Wilson. Yeah, I haven't finalized my rankings. You know, obviously, I won't finalize my rankings, I guess, until right before the season. But I've kind of started the process of doing my 2023 rankings. Right now, I've got him 11th, but I could see moving him up to around eighth at wide receiver. I, I think there's a, you know, like Amon Ross St. Brown, Devontae Adams, DK Metcalf, T. Higgins, Calvin Ridley is kind of the same range where he's in. 
And I think he could move to the top of that range with Aaron Rodgers, but you know, it's not necessarily a guarantee. So I do think he's moved up. He would have been like 20th if they hadn't made the QB change that we're expecting them to. Uh, how about a rankings faller for oh, you? Yeah, Mike Evans. And Dave talked about this uh, on our uh, busts episode of Fantasy mm-hmm. Football today, why he's a bad fit for Baker Mayfield. So it's easy to say, look, they, their quarterback situation is not good. Their offensive line may not be good. Uh, they traded Shaq Mason. They released Donovan mm-hmm. Smith. We'll see where they end up going with, in, with the offensive line. But Dave laid out a good case as uh, Evans is an even bigger bust than I would have anticipated. Baker Mayfield throwing the deep ball, connecting with players deep. It's just not his thing. So yeah. I encourage you to listen to what Dave said as I'll just butcher it, but it, it opened my eyes even more as to why not to draft Mike Evans. Chris Godwin is not quite in that category. I think he can still be okay in PPR, but you know, just not really feeling this Bucks offense right now. Mike Evans is not going to be on a lot of my fantasy teams. Yeah. I think that Bucks offense could just be pretty bad for fantasy. To be honest, if Baker Mayfield doesn't play a lot better than what we've seen over the past couple of seasons from him, I've got Mike Evans at wide receiver 36. Uh, just ahead of Deontay Johnson. Very, very different versions of mediocre in my eyes for two of, for those two guys in 2023. Whereas Chris Godwin is still in PPR wide receiver 20. He's more like wide receiver 24 in non-PPR. And obviously Evans, at least historically, has been better in non-PPR. But that's required you know, him scoring a lot of touchdowns, which is not necessarily something you can count on with Baker Mayfield. I, I would take Mike Evans ahead of either Rashad Bateman or... Mm-hmm. Uh, Odell Beckham. I would assume the same for you. <laughs> yeah, yes, I would. Yep. All right. That's going to do it for FFT and five. We'll be back tomorrow to talk some prospects with Emery Hunt. We'll see you then.